Uh, good evening and welcome on this beautiful, beautiful uh, afternoon. Unfortunately, we could not do this meeting outside, uh, which we could, but we can't. So welcome, and um, I would like to call to order our regular monthly meeting of the Newport News School Board for Tuesday, June 5th, 2018. On behalf of the members of the school board and the our acting superintendent, I welcome each of you watching and present. This is typically uh, something that's missing, but right now I see we have a quorum in order to conduct the business of the school division. Uh, that being said, um, we welcome you again. Uh, we will begin tonight's meeting with the invocation and pledge to the flag. Here to do the honors is a third grade student from Saunders Elementary, Andrea Gonzalez Quintanilla. Is that correct? And Andrea, will, come, will you please come forward and tell us a little bit about yourself before you get started with the invocation and pledge to the flag. Good evening, sir. My name is Andrea Gonzalez Quintanilla. I am a third grade Spartan scholar in the dual language program at Saunders Elementary. Today I will be reading a poem called Latinos de Todas Partes by F. Isabel Campoy. Vivimos en los Estados Unidos, venimos de América del Norte, Centroamérica y América del Sur. Nacimos en islas y desiertos, en Chicago y en Nueva York. Somos de todas las razas y de cualquier color, pero nuestras abuelas hablan español. Somos bilingües, valemos por dos. We live in the United States. We come from North America, Central America, and South America. We were born in islands and deserts in Chicago and New York. And in New York, we are all races of any color, but our grandmothers speak Spanish. We are bilingual. We're worth two. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I think we should give um, Andrea another round of applause. advantage and I tell you why uh, you're in a wonderful school system right and both you can speak two languages at it in third grade what a fantastic start to your career and to your studies so again we thank you you did a lovely job and we welcome you supporting Andrea tonight is her family and her school family could they please uh, stand up and be recognized Uh, the board really appreciates the encouragement you have given Andrea, and we thank you again for bringing her to tonight's meeting. So thank you, and Andrea, again, excellent job. We're going to keep moving, and next we'll have board recognitions. Uh, we do have several board recognitions tonight. Tonight we're going to honor the service of several board members tonight, so it's truly a special night. Thank you for being here. Mr. Hunter, we'll move around front. This evening, as Mr. Nichols indicated, we have the honor of recognizing three dedicated individuals for their service to the Newport News School Board. We'll begin with Sophia Ramirez, the 2017-2018 student representative to the school board. Ms. Ramirez, would you please come forward? In honor of her dedicated service, she's being presented with a resolution and a gift, and the resolution has been signed by all the members of the school board and the acting superintendent. It reads as follows. 
Whereas the Newport News School Board approved in 2004 the creation of the position of student representative to the school board to increase board awareness of the views of students and to provide a peer with whom students could share ideas for improving education. And whereas Sophia I. Ramirez, a senior at Mentral High School, was elected according to the approved procedures by the members of the Student Advisory Group on Education. And whereas Ms. Ramirez served in this capacity from June 2017 through June 2018, faithfully attending the meetings of the school board and participating in numerous other school board functions. And whereas Ms. Ramirez was facilitator to the student high, to the high school student advisory group on education meetings and led the annual high school student expo at Patrick Henry Mall. And whereas Ms. Ramirez actively sought student ideas on educational issues and pursued information and experiences that would assist her efforts to provide valuable insights during the discussion of school board meeting agenda items. And whereas Ms. Ramirez made meaningful contributions to board discussions on topics of great significance to students and the community. And whereas Ms. Ramirez diligently fulfilled all the responsibilities of the student representative while also continuing to excel in her studies in advanced placement coursework, actively participating in indoor and outdoor track, the academic team, the Model United Nations, and the guitar ensemble, serving and volunteering with the National Honor Society, the Spanish Honor Society, and Project Inclusion, and representing Mentrell High School at the 2017 Virginia Girls State Program. And now, therefore, be it resolved by the Newport News School Board that Sophia I. Ramirez is to be highly commended for exemplary service, dedication, and commitment during her tenure as student representative to the school board. And again, it is signed by all members of the school board and the acting superintendent. Sophia, all of us thank you for your dedicated service and we wish you best wishes as you leave Newport News Public Schools and move on to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So we wish you well and congratulations again and thank you. We also um, are recognizing two elected school board members. Um, we're going to first begin with uh, Jeff Stodgill. Mr. Stodgill, would you please come forward? Sure. Mr. Stodgill was elected to the school board in May 2010. He has served two four-year terms for eight years of dedicated service to Newport News Public Schools. He served as chairman for three years from 2014 to 2017, and as vice chairman for two years, from 2012 to 2014. He has participated in over 300 hours of in-service training on policy, personnel management, school law, and legislation through the Virginia School Boards Association Academy, earning him the award of recognition. He's also served on several school board committees during his tenure. These include the Capital Improvement Committee, the Budget Committee, the School Board Policy Review Committee, the Employee Benefits Committee, the Technology Strategic Planning Committee, and the Newport News Education Foundation, among many other committees and other assignments that were assigned to him as chair. <laughs> Mr. Stodgill also served as a Virginia School Boards Association alternate delegate. So Mr. Stodgill will continue to serve the community as he is a gifted and dedicated architect. So on behalf of Newport News Public Schools and all of us here, we thank you for your dedicated service. Congratulations. And our next honoree is Carlton Ashby. Mr. Ashby, would you please come on down? <laughs> Mr. Ashby was first elected to the school board in May 2006. 
So he has served um, three four-year terms for a total of 12 years of dedicated service on the Newport News School Board. He served as chairman for two years from 2012 to 2014 and as vice chairman for four terms from 2010 to 2012 and from 2014 to 2015 and his current term 2017-2018. He's participated in more than 800 hours of in-service training on many of the same things that Mr. Stodgill attended, uh, policy, personnel management, school law, and legislation through the Virginia School Boards Association Academy, which earned him one of the highest awards, the Award of Distinction, for several years in a row. During his tenure, Mr. Ashby has served on several school board committees and boards. Um, he has a nice long list, including the Capital Improvement Committee, the School Board Policy Review Committee, the School Counseling Advisory Committee, New Horizons Regional Education Center Board, the Facilities Planning Committee, the Insurance Committee, the Technology Revision Plan Committee, the School and Workplace Safety Committee, the Special Education Advisory Committee, the Budget Committee, and the Newport News Education Foundation. And Mr. Ashby participated um, in two national searches for superintendent in 2007 and this year. For nearly 35 years, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Mr. Ashby, he served the students mostly in Newport News, but there was a short stint in Hampton, um, as a kindergarten teacher and a counselor before being elected to the school board. Um, also while serving as a deacon and a youth leader in his church. Sir, so Mr. Ashby from the entire community um, and all of us in Newport News Public Schools, we thank you for your dedicated service to the Newport News School Board. Well, we congratulate um, all of our honorees, and again, we thank them for their many years of dedicated service to Newport News Public Schools. Um, at this time, we're going to take about an eight-minute break um, so that our guests may leave if they choose to do so, or you can stretch your legs. Um, those who are viewing at home will have an opportunity to view this month's school board spotlight, so we'll stand in recess for about eight minutes. Thank you. Through Denby High School's Aviation Academy Magnet Program, practical experiences are the key to academic success. Recently, students visited NASA Langley Research Center and Langley Air Force Base to allow their futures to take flight. High school students enrolled in aircraft maintenance tech, piloting, aerospace tech, and introduction to engineering were selected for two amazing field trips that align perfectly with their chosen career pathways. At NASA Langley Research Center, 20 students were selected to tour the model shop and flight research laboratory, the same hangar where Gemini and Apollo astronauts trained for their trips to the moon. Nowadays, NASA uses this massive hangar to customize and outfit aircraft for a range of specialized research missions, including measuring air quality, assessing wind profiles for offshore wind turbines, and calculating high altitude pollution. The students received an up-close tour of the facility and aircraft, including unmanned aerial vehicles. During a weekend tour with the Virginia Air National Guard at Langley Air Force Base, 22 Aviation Academy students were able to see what happens behind the scenes of the most advanced air superiority fighter aircraft, the F-22 Raptor. Organized by Aviation Academy instructor Neil Witherspoon, these immersive experiences allowed students to explore specific careers that interest them, while furthering their knowledge and understanding of various aircraft and the study of flight.
47 years now, Newport News Public Schools annually devotes a day to celebrate the athlete in each of our special education students. George S. Green's Special Education Field Day is the perfect opportunity for students at all grade levels to be recognized as they participate in a range of sports and activities. The day began with 500 special education students parading into Todd Stadium. School administrators, staff, and student volunteers cheered on the athletes with extra enthusiasm. Schools carried banners and signs as they soaked in the applause with smiles of appreciation. On the field and along the track, elementary PE teachers organized games, sports, and physical activities for the students to enjoy. Student and staff volunteers from Dozier, Gildersleeve, Denby, Menchville, Woodside, and Point Option cheered on the students while ensuring that every participant had the time of their life. Once again, George S. Green Field Day provided the perfect setting for all students to build confidence, teamwork, and celebrate their accomplishments through physical fitness. A former Newport News Public Schools student is giving back by introducing a new way to view education. France Lee Griggs, a program manager with Daydream, which is Google's virtual reality platform, selected NNPS as one of the school systems to participate in the Expedition's Augmented Reality Pioneer Program. While most of the beta testing for this yet-to-be-released AR app is taking place in large metropolitan areas, Ms. Griggs, who attended Dozier and Warwick, wanted to give back to the school system that gave her the opportunity to succeed. STEM Instructional Supervisor Tammy Byron coordinated with STEM leads and instructional technology coaches as Google visited 13 elementary and middle schools. Expeditions AR allows teachers to move beyond textbooks, slideshows, and expensive field trips by making show and tell a fully immersive and engaging experience that comes alive right in the classroom. After a quick training session, teachers control the experience by selecting a topic of interest that connects with the Virginia Standards of Learning. Teams of students point their Android devices at a printed QR code, which the app instantaneously converts into a three-dimensional image, which appears to float right before their eyes. Students are able to walk around these high-resolution images and explore them from various vantage points. Exploring far-off planets up close, investigating the structure of a cell, diving deep to see marine life face-to-face, -face, experiencing an erupting volcano, or watching tectonic plates move are just a few of the topics students learn about through augmented reality. All the while, the teacher controls the pacing and introduces questions and ideas to make the learning experience fun and relevant. Through this pioneer program, students and teachers had the opportunity to experience Expeditions AR firsthand and offer their own feedback, creative ideas, and constructive criticism as Google fine-tunes the app for a summer release. Today's students are learning to become tomorrow's leaders. At Discovery STEM Academy, students are leading the way to create a cleaner, healthier environment in which to learn, especially while celebrating Earth Day. Students and staff utilize the school's spacious outdoor learning environments and garden areas for a range of fun and engaging hands-on activities. With guidance from teachers and principal Christine Pilger, Students transformed wood pallets into thriving vegetable and herb gardens. Students also used their art skills to create colorful plant markers out of paint sticks. Master gardeners volunteer their time and share their expertise about butterflies and composting. Students learned which plants are best to attract butterflies and helped construct a worm composting bin to add nutrients to their garden. And the weather was perfect to enjoy reading outside. Several school administrators, including Acting Superintendent Brian Nichols, shared their love of reading with a good book. Whether they were digging, planting, or reading, Discovery STEM Academy students are learning to do their part to celebrate Earth Day every day.
we welcome you back and hope you enjoyed our school board spotlight. We're going to move the agenda. Uh, during our meeting, we provide time for the public to address the board. These are scheduled at the early part of the agenda and also toward the end of the meeting. The board considers this an opportunity to listen to your comments. Please understand that we will consider your concerns or get back with you at a later time. Tonight we do have a few cards in front of me. So um, as you come forward, we ask that you comply with our three uh, minute time limit. Uh, once you begin, the green light comes on. Uh, then it's followed by a yellow light that signals you have 30 seconds remaining. And then the red light and the buzzer means that your time is up. And we ask that if you could wrap your statement up at that time. So at that time, when you hear your name, please come forward. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, tell us your name. <laughs> tell us um, uh, where you live and, uh, and where we'll, we're here to listen. So first up is uh, Sequinta Woodhouse. Hello. Um, my name is Miss Woodhouse. Um, this is my first time being at the board meeting, so I've been directed to know where the light is. Um, I wanted to speak today because I've had a couple of issues with Newsom Park Elementary, and I feel like they can improve their staff in the way that they do things. Um, these are very young children that are in this school, and my daughter was sexually harassed on the 18th of May and that is a big problem because she is a girl and um, I don't think that the things were handled to the best of their ability I feel like because they're in a low income part of Newport News they feel like they don't have to address important things like that um, adamantly and I feel like certain things can be done. There can be teacher aides in certain classes that teachers cannot handle children. Um, and there needs to be at least two to three meetings with the staff amongst the principal and her other staff. Um, just to clarify and to make note that not only one person knows about a situation that all the adults in the school know about the situation. That way the children are more protected. Um, I don't want to get into it further because she's an awesome principal, um, but I feel like they can just do a little bit more improving. Um, I did want to say that the communication is poor amongst parents and staff as just myself. Um, I should not have to come to the school more than one time during the week in order to get information. I'm getting information from my child and not staff, and I believe that is not professional at all. Um, this situation that I just mentioned is a very serious situation for me. I have one daughter and two boys, and I do not tolerate any of that. I teach her, you know, right from wrong, and I teach her that her inappropriate spots, and she was not confused. Um, I've also pressed charges and did other things that I needed to take care of as a parent for my child's safety. Um, I'm speaking today because I feel like someone needs to speak up. Um, I'm also speaking today as an advocate for my daughter. I did not bring her today because this is too much for her. Um, I did send her back to school and Things are being taken care of slowly, but then there's been another incident. And so I would like for everyone here to know that Ms. Judge is an awesome principal. She is. I think that she can better her skills with more time, if that's possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have is, um, is Cameron Roscoe, our previous student representative. Is he there? Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. Um, I'd just like to express my thanks, um, if you didn't hear it already, for the opportunity that was given to me um, to take this position that um, Ms. Ramirez is taking right now. 
Um, and I'm glad to have gone through this. I'm glad to have been able to engage with uh, so many wonderful people and learn so many lessons from such role models in this community. Um, so for those who do not know, uh, my name is Cameron Rasco. I am uh, born in San Antonio, but raised in Newport News, um, raised up in Newport News Public Schools, um, and, and made all the better for it. Um, so I came up to speak quickly about my experiences at the Naval Academy Preparatory School, and I'll be as brief as I can. Um, so the first time, and possibly the last time, that I jumped off of a 30-foot tall ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, um, I told my friends to count down from five. Um, and I counted five, four, three, two, and then I jumped. Um, and when I hit the water, they were wondering why I didn't say one. And I said, um, when you sky, when you, uh, when you skydive, they count down from three and they push you on one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, I just said it offhand. Um, but now that I'm thinking about it, um, it's it's been a very major part of my life to jump without without looking or without worrying so much sometimes. Um, with going to the Naval Academy, with uh, becoming the battalion commander um, of everyone in my battalion in the first marking period, um, with trying to take on academics in classes that I'd never taken before, reading books that I'd never even seen the topics of before, and trying to write four-page essays on them in one or two nights. That was me jumping without looking. Sometimes it looks like Sometimes it, it looks like taking a position that you thought you weren't exactly ready for, like a student representative to the school board. <laughs> I'm sure Ms. Sophia was much more ready than I am. But I'm glad to have had the strength and the foresight to take such opportunities to ask questions that no one else is asking. And I learned all of that um, here at, at the Newport News School, school Board. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to have been here to have learned all of that. And I'm glad to have been given the space and opportunity to ask questions and to sometimes jump without looking. So I thank you all again. And um, please feel free to contact me um, and reach out if you need anything when I'm in the area. Have a great evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Rasko. That's um, College Career and Citizen Ready. And that, that's what that looks like. Um, I just want to thank you for coming back and, and, and sharing your experiences with us uh, during your first year there in the, the Naval Academy. Is that where you were? Uh, the Naval Academy Preparatory School. Preparatory School. Oh, and well prepared. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to continue with the agenda. Next, we have our consent agenda. In front of you or in your packages, there was a 3.01. The minutes from a special meeting May 4th, 2018. Uh, 302 minutes from the regular session May 15, 2018. 3.03, the financial report. Revenue and expenses May 2018. Child Nutrition Services May 2018. 3.04, personnel report. 3.05, authorization to sign in absence of the superintendent. Uh, have I, can I get a motion to approve? Or? So moved. Second. You heard the motion and you heard the second. And I have the question. There being no question, uh, Ms. Simpson, please call the roll. <coughs> Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mr. Stodge Hill? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. And Mr. Harris? Four. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. I will move on to an item number four, our action items. And first up, we have. Uh, uh, 4.01 superintendent's contract. Uh, can we get a motion for approval? I move approval of the superintendent's contract. Second. You heard the first and you heard the second. Now for the question. There being none, Ms. Simpson, please call the roll. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mr. Stachel? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. And Mr. Harris? Four. Motion carries to approve the superintendent's contract 7 0. Okay, we'll move on to personnel actions uh, 4.02. And we'll have Mr. Brown. Do we have any personnel actions? We do. We have a uh, number of personnel actions. Tonight. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to start with uh, administrative transfers. I want to inform you of the following transfers. Uh, Lyndon Hott, Assistant Principal at Palmer, 
will be the assistant principal at Watkins Early Childhood Center, and none of these folks are here uh, right now. So Jeff Armstrong, assistant principal at Nelson Elementary School, will be the assistant principal at Palmer Elementary School. Barbara Taylor, assistant principal at Dutro, will be the assistant principal at Jenkins Elementary. Robin Boone, assistant principal at Saunders Elementary School, will be the assistant principal at Denby Early Childhood Center. Jody Johnson, uh, formerly Jody Moore, uh, assistant principal at Hilton Elementary, will be the new assistant principal at BC Charles. Um, Natia Smith, uh, the assistant principal for instruction at Heritage High School, will be the assistant principal, the 12 month assistant principal at Dozier Middle School. <coughs> Jamitha Ruffin, who's the assistant principal at Huntington Middle School, will be the assistant principal at Hines Middle School. Allison Anderson, the assistant principal at Gildersleeve, will be the assistant principal at Passage Middle School. Tiffany Thompson, assistant principal at Work High School, will be the assistant principal at Denby High School. Lisa Egoff, assistant principal at Dozier Middle School, will be the assistant principal for instruction at Heritage High School. Colleen Hunt, the assistant principal at Hines Middle School, will be the assistant principal at Warwick High School. Sherry Sanchez, assistant principal at Woodside High School, will be the assistant principal at Crittenden Middle School. Chris Smith, assistant principal at Huntington Middle School, will be the assistant principal at Heritage High School. And then Karen Person, assistant principal at Hines Middle School, will be the assistant principal at Woodside High School. Uh, those are the administrative transfers. Um, Part of what made room for those were the is the closing of Huntington and some of the shifts we've done there. Um, now I'd like to talk to you about some uh, recommendations for appointments. Um, looking at these recommendations for appointments, we had um, at least seven assistant principals retired this year. That's a very unusual year for Newport News Public Schools. And when you add up the years of service of those seven assistant principals, you have over 200 years of service to this school division. So can we give them a round of applause? Even though they're not here. I don't know if they took a pledge and said we all go out together. I'm not sure what happened there, but we really appreciate that service. So those of you in the room that are being recommended for appointments, you have really big shoes to fill. Um, so first, I'd like to start with Susanna Bailey. So I'd like to recommend Susanna Bailey for the position of Instructional Supervisor of World Languages. Ms. Bailey is currently serving as Assistant Principal at Denby High School. Uh, she received her Master's of Education in 2013 in Educational Leadership from Regent University. Uh, Ms. Bailey has been with us since 2006 in Newport News Public Schools as a Spanish teacher, a world language teacher, and then most recently as an assistant principal. So Susanna Bailey, Instructional Supervisor, World Languages. <laughs> Next I have Kimberly Coleman. I'd like to recommend Kimberly Coleman for the position of elementary school assistant principal at Dutro Elementary School. Uh, Ms. Ms. Coleman is currently serving as an elementary teacher at an Achievable Dream Academy. Um, in 2017, Ms. Coleman received her post master's certificate from the George Washington University in educational leadership and administration. Um, she's been with us since 2012 as an elementary teacher at Achievable Dream Academy. So once again, Kimberly Coleman, recommendation to be assistant principal at Dutro Elementary School. <laughs> Next, we have Jessica Weymouth German. I'd like to recommend Jessica Weymouth German for the position of assistant principal at Gildersleeve Middle School. Ms. Weymouth German is currently serving as a math teacher at Dozier Middle School. Uh, in 2016, Ms. Weymouth German received her Master's in Education, Administration, and Supervision uh, from Old Dominion University. Ms. Weymouth German has been with us since 2010, first as an elementary teacher at Newsom Park, uh, then as a math teacher at both Passage and Dozier Middle School. So once again, Jessica Weymouth German, Assistant Principal, Gildersleeve Middle School. <laughs> Next, we have Naima Gibbs. I'd like to recommend Naima Gibbs for the position of elementary school assistant principal at General Stanford Elementary School. So going on base. Uh, Ms. Gibbs is currently serving as an elementary teacher at Greenwood Elementary School. Uh, Ms. Gibbs uh, received her Master's of Arts in Educational Leadership from Regent University in 2016. Also has a Bachelor of Arts in English Education from Hampton University. She's been with us since 2007 in Newport News Public Schools as a teacher and a lead teacher at both Greenwood and Newsom Park Elementary. So once again, Naima Gibbs, uh, recommendation to be elementary school <clears throat> assistant principal at General Stanford Elementary. <clears throat> Next, 
Next, we have Patrick Horan. I'd like to recommend Patrick Horan for the position of assistant principal at Hines Middle School. Mr. Horan is currently serving as a social studies teacher at Minchville High School. Uh, Mr. Horan earned his educational specialist degree in educational leadership from Old Dominion University. Um, he's been with us since 2010 as a social studies teacher at both Hines Middle School and Menchville High School, so sort of returning home mm -hmm. to Hines. He's also adjunct faculty member at Christopher Newport University. So Patrick Horan, once again, assistant principal at Hines Middle School is the recommendation. <laughs> Next we have Lindsay Kidd. All right, Ms. Kidd is uh, recommended to for the position of assistant principal at Saunders Elementary School. Uh, Ms. Kidd is currently serving as a teacher at Greenwood Elementary School. Um, she earned her Master's of Arts in Teaching in 2012 from the College of William Mary. She also holds a degree in English and Business Administration. Uh, she's been with us since 2012 as a teacher at Greenwood Elementary School. So once again, Lindsay Kidd, assistant principal, Saunders Elementary School. Next up is Cassandra Murphy. I'd like to recommend Ms. Murphy for the position of Assistant Principal at an Achievable Dream Academy. Ms. Murphy is currently serving as an RTI, Response to Intervention Specialist, at Sedgefield Elementary School. Uh, Ms. Murphy, in 2005, received her Educational Specialist degree in Administration and Supervision from Old Dominion University. Um, Ms. Murphy has uh, been with us since 2004, but her career in education started in 1998. Uh, but in 2004, she was an elementary teacher in, at South Morrison Elementary. She's also been a technology curriculum integration specialist. We now call them instructional technology coaches. Uh, so she has the background in there. She's also been an administrative force uh, almost since, well, since Spark began. So one of our Spark originals. Um, and currently is an RTI specialist at Set at Newsom Park and at Sedgefield Elementary. Um, so I'd like to re recommend Cassandra Murphy position of assistant principal at Achievable Dream Academy. <laughs> so next up is Lori Norton. I'd like to recommend Lori Norton for the position of special education supervisor. Ms. Orton Norton is currently serving as a lead special education teacher at Denby High School. Uh, 2017, she received her Master of Education in Administration and Leadership from Grand Canyon University. Uh, Ms. Norton um, has been an educator since 1992, uh, serving in schools in Louisiana, Tennessee, uh, came to us in 2005 at Woodside High School as a special education teacher, and then most recently as a special ed lead teacher at Denby High School. So once again, that's Lori Norton, uh, position of special education supervisor. Next, we have Ebony Parker. I'd like to recommend Ebony Parker for the position of elementary school assistant principal at Newsom Park Elementary School. Ms. Parker is currently serving as an elementary teacher at McIntosh Elementary School. 2012, she received her Master of Education, K-12 Leadership and Supervision from Grand Canyon University. Um, uh, Ms. Parker has been with us since 2008 as an elementary teacher and third grade lead teacher at Achievement Dream Academy, and most recently elementary teacher and fourth grade lead teacher. So third grade, fourth grade covered. Um, so in, that's where she is currently at McIntosh. Once again, it's Ebony Parker, elementary school assistant principal, Newsom Park Elementary. You guys are doing great, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Catherine Satterwhite is uh, the next person. Thank you, Catherine. I'd like to recommend Catherine Satterwhite for the position of elementary school assistant principal at R.O. Nelson Elementary School. Ms. Satterwhite is currently serving as a literacy support specialist with Hampton City Schools. We're very fortunate to get her literacy background. Uh, 2017 received her Master's of Education in Educational Administration from Lamar University. Uh, Ms. Satterwhite has been in education since 2009. Um, she's been a special education teacher, also an elementary teacher, and most recently, since 2016, has been a literacy support specialist um, in Hampton City Schools. So once again, that's Catherine Satterwhite, elementary assistant principal, R.O. Nelson, is the recommendation. <laughs> Charnell Simpson. 
I'd like to recommend Charnel Simpson for the position of elementary assistant principal at Hilton Elementary School. Ms. Simpson is currently serving as an elementary teacher at Cary Elementary School with Hampton City Schools. She received her Master of Science in Educational <laughs> Leadership at Old Dominion University in 2017. She's been an educator since 2010 um, at, in Hampton City Schools and has also been a 21st century site coordinator, which we do quite a bit of that work here as part of our extended learner program um, at Cary Elementary School. So that's Charnel Simpson, elementary assistant principal, is the recommendation Hilton Elementary. So the final recommendation for the evening is Cassandra Stevenson. I'd like to recommend Cassandra Stevenson for the position of elementary assistant principal at Deer Park Elementary School. Ms. Stevenson is currently serving as, as an exceptional education teacher with Brunswick County Public Schools. Um, in 2010, she received her Master of Education in Administration and Supervision from Liberty University. Um, she's been uh, an educator since 2005. She also had a previous career as an accountant. We can always use that expertise here in the Brunswick <laughs> Public Schools. Um, but 2005 is an exceptional education teacher in Brunswick County Schools. So the recommendation is Cassandra Stevenson for elementary assistant principal at Deer Park Elementary. <laughs> so that concludes the personnel recommendations that I have for you tonight, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Brian. Um, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. We heard the motion, you heard the second. Time for the question. There being none, Ms. Hinton, please call a roll. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mr. Starchill? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. And Mr. Harris? Four. Motion carries 7 0. Congratulations. How about another? Congratulations. Mr. Nichols, thank you very much for that report. And again, another congratulations to um, all those who have been selected, uh, those who are being transferred. I uh, congratulate you on your transfer and those who are being promoted to assistants, um, principals, and supervisors. So again, let's have another round of applause for you. All right, we're just full of good stuff today. Uh, so we're, we're going to move the agenda again, uh, 4.03, uh, the proposed fiscal year 19 school board operating budget. And Brian? Oh, I'll take that one. Um, so I won't take it personal that people are leaving my presentation. <laughs> switch personal actions to the yeah, end next time. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Harris has a recommendation. Do we have a second? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you really want to be loved. <laughs> I feel bad for the person doing this report. Oh, wait, that's me. Okay. Thank you for those of you staying for this uh, part of the presentation. Um, so tonight we have for you uh, as an action item the school board's operating budget you know we've gone through this process for quite some time this was an unusual year as the house and the senate debated over what a budget could be so they finally passed a budget therefore we can now pass a budget so we have that for you today i'm going to provide an overview because um, most everything in our budget pretty much stayed the same as what we're trying to do and matching up with our goals um, so what you have on your left is the school board's proposed budget that's what we went into it with that would have required a $3.7 million increase um, from the city. Uh, it would have allowed us to do a 4% salary increase and the compression adjustments, plus replace our phone system over two years at the, at the tune of $1 million. 
um, the budget we have before you um, and the budget uh, for you to vote on tonight um, has the city revenue increase of 700,000 um, and the employee salary increase of 4%. Um, just as a point of clarification, there was an additional million that the city um, has proposed to give us in exchange for fiber that will operate outside of this operating budget. That is a transaction that operates outside. So that's why you see the increase is 700,000 and not $1.7 million. Um, that'll allow us to do the phone system and some of the work we wanna do. That'll just operate outside of the budget. So that is a uh, high level overview of where we are with the budget. Um, and be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Uh, question in, in terms of procedure. Uh, does the law require us to vote this evening uh, or uh, do we have time to reflect and review? Miss. I got that one up. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Brown, I want to ask you, uh, could you elaborate a little bit more? Sure. So my understanding is that there is a state code that requires us to adopt a budget by a certain deadline. Uh, also requires the city to adopt a budget by a certain deadline. And I'd just like to know how close we are to that deadline. Given uh, this has been an unusual budget season yes. uh, and that uh, uh, we've had a revision um, by city council, which is outside of the operating budget, but we've had a revision uh, there from city council. And now we've had a revision from the state. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, moving pieces and parts, uh, and I wanted to uh, get clarification on how much time the board has to reflect on the changes that have taken place. I think uh, Ms. Mary Russo could kind of enlighten us some up on the regulations. The city has adopted their budget, so we do have that. We do now have the state numbers. Good evening. Good evening. I'm not but um, <laughs> the state laws, I understand, require you to have a budget by June the 30th, so we're not required to adopt it tonight. Um, what we are needing to do is get contracts out to folks pretty soon. So we need to know what's going to happen with salaries so we can do that. Um, so it's important that we have a budget sooner than later. Um, we do not know yet what the state will do with their budget. The state has adopted a budget. We do not have the state information for our school division yet. No school division does. It's our understanding that they'll have it to us not later than June the 15th is what we've been told. Um, if the state number is uh, in the ballpark of what we have or lower. We don't have to go back to the city uh, for any further action on their part. If the state revenue is higher, which I don't think it will be, but if it is, um, then we would need to go back to the city uh, for a, additional consideration of our budget. So um, that's where we are. Okay. Anyone else? So, so <laughs> here's the problem, that we, we don't have the final numbers mm -hmm. because the this, this state hasn't given them yet. So I, I, I mean, are other localities voting on the budget without final numbers? I mean, I... Yes, they are. They are? Yes. Okay. Okay. And I do understand that, um, you know, contracts need to go out. And um, we have expertise that can um, make the numbers work. But I, I, I am fine voting on it, but I would like to have the new book in my hands as soon as possible. Yes, absolutely. Anyone else? Um, uh, Mr. Well, Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, this should be the last time we have a chance to vote on it, correct? Correct. Uh, we don't have a meeting in June. It's supposed to be on a contract before June 30th. So this leaves it tonight, basically. And once we have all the particulars, we will make sure you have the, okay. the, the big budget book, right. the summary, and, and so forth. But yes, uh, other local school divisions have to run the same process okay. and have voted or will vote prior to, for the same reason, right. around contracts. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in terms of uh, the logistics of um, increase, increases in folks' pay, when will that take place? Is that August or September in terms of uh, when staff will see increases in their pay? Mm -hmm. It it'll, for, it'll begin July 1, so the first paycheck you would see then would be the August paycheck. So um, that's my understanding. Oh, the end of the July paycheck, I'm sorry. Um, the last work day in July. So it begins then. Mr. Chairman, uh, additionally, in terms of the compression adjustments that are being made, I, um, 
be interested to know for the various positions um, what is what is the actual increase in pay relative to other divisions that we're actually getting um, through this so wh where, where are we competitive wise with our bus driver pay our child nutrition worker pay teacher pay etc and that's uh, some of the information that I'm, um, I'm looking to, to capture okay um, would you like to have an answer this evening yes yeah, so to, to vote this evening yes. I'd like to have an answer yes. this evening. Uh -huh. <laughs> We don't know that yet because we don't know what every other school division is doing. So it's not possible for us to answer that question this evening. Um, we did provide the board information about where we were with 17's pay, uh, and we were looking, you know, pretty good. We not where we need to be with regard to teacher pay, um, but you know, it's going it's a long haul. So, and so, Mr. Chairman, a lot of people are asking me. So, in terms of the compression adjustment. Um, Overall, what is it? Is it one percent for most people? Um, is it you know, what's it working out to be for? Well, for we're, most, uh, we're not going to be doing any compression adjustments in the proposed in the, the proposed budget. We were in the adopted budget. What we're recommending to you tonight, there is no compression. There's no adjustment. there is no compression adjustment. Yes, so every, everyone is is after everybody gets four percent. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, consider the motion. Okay. You heard the motion. The budget. You heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. You heard the motion, you heard the second. Uh, any more question? <coughs> there being none, uh, Ms. Sinton, please call the roll. <coughs> Mr. Hunter, for clarification, is the motion on the table for, that we move forward with a motion, or are we actually taking a motion uh, to approve? Moving, I move that we uh, consider adoption of the budget as, pro as revised. Okay. Is that what's your second as well, Mr. Harris? Yes. So you heard the motion and the second. Uh, now, do we have any additional questions? Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, what I would ask at this time is, is there a possibility of us reconvening the board after the 15th of June to, to vote again before the June 30th? No, no. I mean, that would, be, uh, that would be up to our board members. The answer would be probably yes. Okay. All right, so I'm, I'm making a motion to... But, oh, well, but we, have to, we, have we, we have a motion on the floor first. Okay. Or can you amend the motion? No, I, I, no, no can't you can't, can't amend that motion, can you? Right. So and, we have and a motion if, on the floor. If the board side. decides to come back and decides to um, hold a special meeting, of course, we can most certainly, with, with proper notice, prepare a special meeting for the board. Yes. But for the purpose of tonight, I think that the motion is on the table. Okay. So if, you heard the motion. Better, Any more question? Yeah, I guess what happens if the state doesn't... Um, uh, submit their findings on the fifteenth or, or before. Then we're back at square one again. So, um, I mean, there's no heads up that they actually be ready, correct? Well, they promised us by the fifteenth. That's what yeah, we're looking at. So, depending on how they come, I mean, it's possible we we could have to come back. Right. However, um, this would allow us to move forward with our um, contracts, our salary adjustments. I mean, our salary increases, and and folks know where they are, what they're getting, and, and sort of moving the system forward. But yes, right. to answer your question, right. yes. Yeah, I, I think it's fair. You know, any more? I, I think Mr. it's just, Mr. Chairman, oh yeah, please, please, uh, Mr. Stodge. Uh, just let me explain the logic behind what I, in my motion. Uh, I think it's a responsibility of this board to, um, and I think tonight is right, to uh, revise its budget, and you know, we, have gone through an evolutionary process here. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for us to, just because the state hasn't finalized uh, what their numbers are, uh, I don't think it's appropriate for us to uh, leave it uh, in an unresolved state. And I think by adoption, consideration and adoption of a budget tonight, we resolve where we stand. And uh, I think over the course of the last several months, uh, we were hoping uh, to get more funding from the city. That didn't happen. Um, this school division has moved as far as it can, I think, to uh, step forward and assure that we're going to be giving a 4% raise next year. I think for, for us to back out of that and not ratify it tonight um, it just paints a big question mark. This board could always, between now and the 30th, reconvene and, and, and 
and refi revise its budget based on new information. But I think tonight we need to we we need to ratify what uh, where we are at this point and what we can do for next year based on <coughs> what we see ahead of us. Um, I think to do less than that is is, is creating a, a lot more uncertainty than is necessary. Uh, Miss Hinton, uh, call a roll. Okay. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mr. Stodgehill? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. And Mr. Harris? Four. Motion carries 7 0 to adopt the revised budget. Thank you. Okay, we'll keep moving on uh, to item number 4.04 .04, Social Studies Textbooks Adoption. Um, grades 6 to 12. We heard the report at our last meeting. Uh, can we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. You heard the motion. You heard the second. Time for the question. There being none, Ms. Hinton, please call the roll. Mr. Hunter. Four. Ms. Simons. Four. Mr. Stodgehill. Four. Mr. Ashby. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. Mr. Ely. Four. And Mr. Harris. Four. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. And our next action item would be item number 4.05. The 2018 2019 federal funding applications. <coughs> we also did hear that report at a previous meeting. Do we have a motion for approval on that? So moved. Second. You heard the motion and the second. Time for the question. There being none, Ms. Hinton, please call the roll. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mr. Stodgehill? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. And Mr. Harris? Four. Motion carries 7 0. And our latest action item this evening, uh, 4.06, the new and revised policies. Again, we did hear that report in our previous meeting. Uh, can we have a motion for approval? So moved. <laughs> You heard the motion, and I believe you heard the second. Second. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, time for the question. Any question? There being none, Ms. Hinton, please call a roll. Mr. Hunter. Four. Ms. Simons. Four. Mr. Stodgehill. Four. Mr. Ashby. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. Mr. Ely. Four. And Mr. Harris. Four. Motion carries 7 0. Well, thank you very much for uh, to my board members for uh, getting us through that uh, lengthy action item uh, portion of the agenda. Uh, we're going to move on to our reports and information. Uh, 5.01, Summer Learning and Development. Yes, and uh, Angela Rett and uh, Anthony Tyler will come forward and talk to you about all the big plans we have for the summer. Welcome. Good afternoon, Chairman Hunter, Vice Chairman Ashby, members of the board, and Mr. Nichols. Anthony and I are pleased to be here this evening to provide a, pre a preview for you on our various summer learning opportunities that we have available. In Newport News, we fully embrace that belief that SMART is something you become, and we know that it applies not only to our students, but to us as adult learners as well. So this evening, we've actually broken our presentation into two pieces. I'm going to begin by talking with you about IGNITE, which is the umbrella term that we use to encompass all of our staff learning, and then Anthony will provide an update for you on our Spark Learning for Students. When we talk about our staff learning, we always plan and differentiate that by looking through three lenses. So I'll start by talking about opportunities that we have available for all staff across the division. Then we'll look at some specialized offerings just for our new teachers. And we'll wrap up by looking at some initiatives we have that are targeting focus areas with our teacher cohorts. So first we have our Ignite Summer Learning Catalog. The catalog is open to all staff members across the division, and the courses within this are aligned to the goals that we have outlined in our strategic plan. So all of those goals fall under one of three focus strands, which you can see here. We've got teaching and learning, STEM quest, and youth development in the classroom, and you can see a small sampling of the many classes that we have available for teachers this summer. Another opportunity that is open to all staff members across the division is our second annual Innovate Technology Conference that's hosted by our technology department. 
It will be held August 13th and 14th at Gildersleeve Middle School. And new this year is the idea that learning will be specialized by level, meaning that August 13th will feature sessions specifically for elementary staff, and the 14th will be for our secondary staff. Sessions are offered on a variety of technology topics to offer choice and to best meet the needs of all staff members. Next, we have our Start Smart initiative, which is geared toward our new hires to offer a purposeful welcome. And we get at this through three different initiatives. So first is Ignite, which I already mentioned to you. Um, new hires are eligible to register for any of the Ignite classes that we offer, but we actually have a dedicated week in which we've got classes specific to the needs of a new hire. We also have our new teacher welcome centers, which are an open opportunity for new hires to meet with current educators, to learn about the technology that we offer in Newport News, to preview our curriculum, and to get their questions answered. And lastly, we have our Spark Collaboration, which is an opportunity for new hires to teach and learn alongside master teachers in our Spark program. Finally, we have specialized teacher cohorts that are designed to support learning around targeted focus areas. We currently have two cohorts that we're running, both in partnership with local universities, so one being the University of Virginia and the other the College of William and Mary. Our UVA cohort began during the 16-17 school year with an anticipated May 2019 graduation date. And our William and Mary cohort actually just started this year and we've got a tentative May 2020 graduation date. Both cohorts have anywhere from 24 to 25 current Newport News teachers in them. So these teachers are applying their learning daily in the classroom with the students that they serve. Um, and all will graduate with endorsements in reading, and some will actually be dually endorsed with an ESL endorsement as well to support the growing need that our data reveals. Um, so as you can see, we have a wide variety of learning opportunities to offer our staff autonomy and choice and to support their learning within a purposeful framework. All of the items that I just mentioned are being held this summer, anywhere between June 18th and August 16th. We do have nearly 80 courses offered, so lots of variety for our teachers. And in addition to all of the division-wide things that I mentioned, different schools have site-based learning as well to support their staffs. So I'll turn it over to Anthony. Good evening, Mr. Nichols, Mr. Hunter board members, um, I'm going to speak to you this evening about SPARC, our summer program for arts, recreation, and knowledge. Um, we are entering our fourth year of SPARC, um, 2018, and so um, SPARC is part of our extended learning program that is our summer component, and you know the foundation of our extended learning program is based upon academic support and enrichment, field trips, meals, and transportation, and collaboration with community business, excuse me, community business partners. And, um, through our SPARC program, we have an academic component in our K-2, our 3-5, and our 6-8 sites. This year, we will be at, for our K-2 sites, we will be at Marshall Early Learning Center, Denby Early Childhood Center, and Sedgefield is our new addition this year. Sedgefield Elementary School will be hosting K-2. For our 3-5 students, we will be at Epps Elementary School, Newsom Park, and Palmer Elementary Schools. And for our middle school component, we have two new middle schools this year, which will be Crittenden and Doja Middle School. Our morning portion will be, will be our early learning labs in our K-2 schools, our summer learning labs in our 3-5 schools, and then we'll be having our reading math camps and our Camp Connection Leadership programs for our middle school students. The afternoon portion will continue to be our enrichment pieces. We have 20 community business partners that will be hosting enrichment um, portion for our students, as well as enrichment clubs that our teachers will be hosting, which will be our math, technology, music, um, the newspaper, enrichment piece and then other field trips and STEM initiatives. For our high school students, we will be offering our credit recovery and credit advancement programs. Um, those will be held Monday through Thursday from 11, 8, 11, 7.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. for our credit recovery piece and for our credit advancement will be held from 7.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday through Thursday as well. There's a snapshot of some of the programs that we will be offering for our credit advancement and recovery and then we'll be having our magnet programs as well. This year will be our second year of the SPARC camps. SPARC camps will be held this year from the 6th of August to the 16th of August, two weeks. We have 11 partners that will be hosting the SPARC camps. For those of you, just to give you a refresher, SPARC camps is the opposite of regular SPARC. Our regular SPARC program will be held in our buildings, um, conducted by our teachers from Newport News. But with SPARC camps, um, we are held 
form the community business partners in their locations. Our kids are bused to them and they are learning on site with those community business partners and then they are bused back and then home to their parents. So this is what our summer learning looks like here in Newport News Public Schools um, from our <coughs> teachers and from our students. So if you have any questions, we'll take a look at this time. Yeah, that's Ms. Simons. Uh, so what do you think is um, the coolest new partner that we have working with us in um, elementary or middle or, or high school this summer? I know we've worked with Virginia Living Museum and Air and Space and NASA, but do we have any like new partners that you're excited about? In the, with the Spark Camps, we have a couple of new partners. We have the Catalyst Effects. They are, they are doing an empowerment workshop mm -hmm. over at South Morrison. Um, we are connecting with Exit LLC and um, the global boxing community. We're doing a boxing camp, a Spark Camp this summer. Right. So we, we have a couple of new interesting features this summer for our families. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yes, um, I'm still for Mr. Ramirez. Uh, are there any internship opportunities within Spark for uh, maybe students who are eager for volunteer work during the summer? Well, we, we, we have hired, I want to say, 114 summer interns, which are high school and college <coughs> students, that have been working on Spark program this summer. And those are paid internships? Yes, paid internships, yes. Right. Even better. But we're always willing to take volunteers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mr. Harris. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the times on the Spark Camps, I know it's August 6th to the 16th. Is it all day? It'll be from 8, 8 o'clock a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay, 8 to 3, and they will be fed, right? Yes, sir. They, the students, right. they, the students, the way Spark Camps are ran, the students are picked up from their home bus stops mm -hmm. and their addresses. They will be hub bused into Crittenden Middle School, which is the hub site. Okay. They will pick up a breakfast and a lunch, and they will be bused out to their camp location. And then once the camp location, they conclude their lesson at the camp location, they'll be bused back to Crittenden to take home a take-home snack, then bused home. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Brown. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, question about the um, uh, number of children attending um, uh, last year, and, uh, and, um, and have we increased? And then sim some similar question on the teacher side, number of teachers uh, who attended um, in previous years, uh, and any increases. <coughs> Uh, that we've seen uh, over the years. Yes, um, last year I believe we at the, from the teachers numbers we were at the 400 100 teacher mark. We are at the 500 teacher mark right now for Spark. Um, with the student numbers, we were just at 6,000 students last year. We are looking projected to be 6,000 plus. Um, and I would say the same thing for the teachers as well. Uh, when I first started here, I think it was six years ago, we had about 200 teacher registrations for summer, and I believe last summer we were at 1,800. Um, and we have steadily increased every single summer. We've never had a slide, we've never leveled. It has increased, and I'd say that's by word of mouth and by some wonderful opportunities that have been developed internally by our staff that attract teachers and make them want to come back for more. Uh, Mr. Ashby. And just to piggyback on that, um, how you say it's increased, but I think that, well, I know that that is something that attributes to our high graduation rate and the low drop dropout rate because of the ongoing state of development that happens and coupled and augment that with the 21st century learning that happens also. So as I've been listening to, in reference to the staff development or staff learning, it is just simply so paramount about what you're doing in reference to training our teachers for 21st century learning in a situation setting like that. And to Mr. Tyler, in reference to the SPARK program, in which I blessed to, to participate in it with my team leaders, but I just really want to say in reference to SPARK and highlighting the SPARK camps, um, I got a wonderful book from Ms. Susan Tilley called The Innovative Mindset. And in that book, it just simply talks about doing things different, doing things as far as 21st century, going off um, of a site and doing things um, on location with children because they get a practical experience in that situation and setting like that. And that really prepares them to be college career citizen um, should ready. So it really helps build them tremendously. So um, the innovation, the instruction, the forward thinking um, that's being displayed and demonstrated as far as the staff development and for spark for our children is just simply outstanding and phenomenal. So hats off to you for the difference that you're making in our children. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, thank you for the wonderful report. Okay. Our next report, we have a um, college career and citizen ready report. 
Yes, uh, Susan Tilly is going to come up and give you really a profile of the class of 2018, which you'll see walk across the stage in just a few days. Good evening, Mr. Hunter, Mr. Ashby, members of the board, Mr. Nichols. I always begin by saying I'm delighted to be here, but tonight I am truly elated to be here because I have the honor of celebrating our graduating class of 2018. This weekend, the class of 2018 leaves Newport News Public Schools, but before they move on, their legacy deserves recognition. Their efforts and persistence have furthered the Newport News Public Schools mission of preparing students to graduate college, career, and citizen ready. Please allow me to share a few of their many accomplishments. This senior class is 1,848 strong. 40% of our graduates earned a grade point average of 3.0 or higher and are graduating with honors. 21% of our seniors are graduating with highest honors, which means they earned a GPA of 3.5 or higher. And for the best news ever, the class of 2018 has received over $50 million in scholarship offers for continued education. This is record setting for our uh, division and we couldn't be more delighted. <clears throat> The class of 2018 is college ready. 44% of the senior class earned an advanced studies diploma. 85% of them took advanced coursework during their time in high school. Specifically, this group of kids took 3,336 advanced placement classes during their four years of high school. Truly remarkable. And 82, per, 82 of our students are truly college ready in that they earned 1,492 college credit hours through the early college and early career program at Thomas Nelson. Our seniors are also career ready. Of the over 3,000 industry certifications earned this year, the class of 2018 earned 1,033 of them. And well over half of them held jobs during their high school career. We are delighted that over 350 students will graduate with a magnet seal on their diploma because they successfully completed the program requirements in aviation, health sciences, STEM, and the arts. Our graduates are citizen ready too. They have been busy serving their school and community. Community. 87% of them participated in a club, sport, or activity during their senior year, and 78% performed volunteer work in the community, and they did this in big ways. For example, they conducted leadership training for over 600 middle school students, and they led implementation of two new middle school initiatives, Bloom and Expect Respect. And finally, after graduation, the class of 2018 has important plans for the future. 5% will serve our great nation by entering the military, 18% plan to enter the workforce or technical studies, and 72% will attend a two or four year college or university. We look forward to formally celebrating these wonderful students and their accomplishments beginning this Thursday evening with Achievable Dream at the Ferguson Center at CNU. Saturday is a full day at the Hampton Coliseum beginning with Woodside, followed by Denby, and concluding with Heritage. And we'll wrap things up on Sunday with Mitchville and Warwick. It promises to be a fantastic weekend for our students, our families, and our whole school community. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I just want to say thank you for that great report. And so it feels so good to know all the great things that our seniors are doing is, and going to college and career and citizen. And we have to feel like we're definitely on the right track. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Ms. Tilly, thank you for the thank report. You. Okay. We're going to move the agenda. Uh, also in your package, there was the attendance report, membership report, construction report. Anyone have any questions on that? On 03. If not, <coughs> we'll move on to our comments by our acting superintendent. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. Uh, tonight also marks my last school board meeting as your acting superintendent. I first want to take the opportunity to thank the school board for entrusting me with uh, to lead this organization. I started as classroom teacher so many years ago. So thank you. Uh, the biggest <laughs> lesson I've learned in this six months is you matter. So two words um, can change lives and change the world if we use them correctly. Believe in them and leverage them. Um, to our board members that are, that are leaving us, Mr. Stodge, I want to thank you for your leadership um, and also teaching me so much about strategy. I've always been more of a checkers person, uh, but you've shown me the value of playing chess and being three moves ahead. So thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Ashby, I want to thank you for your unwavering moral compass. Uh, you've, I've learned from you that no decision is too difficult when you connect it to your why. Um, your strength, passion, and commitment to our students has opened up so many doors. 
So thank you for that. Um, and to our student representative, Ms. Ramirez, my co-host <laughs> with SAGE, I want to thank you for the constant reminder of how amazing our students truly are. I hear people say all the time that kids are different. And they say it in a negative way. And I always say, you're right. Our kids are different because I was nowhere near, near as amazing and driven as Sophia is, and so many of our students. Look what our students did in that last presentation. I wasn't there, and I'm doing okay. <laughs> our kids are truly amazing, they are different. Um, so I wanna thank you for your voice, and your voice of 30,000 kids. You definitely matter. Um, to our community and families, I wanna thank you uh, for showing me that there's a tremendous opportunity that exists when we move outside of the school walls. We did three family resource forums this year. We had over a thousand people attend those. Uh, truly remarkable, um, and we're smarter as a result of that. Um, to our staff, and by staff I mean every single person that works or volunteers in New Produce Public Schools, um, you matter. You've made big things happen for our students. So in the past six months, in a time when many organizations may sit, sit still, You've accelerated progress and put your foot on the gas, and I couldn't be prouder. We will end this school year with more students graduating, more industry certifications, more schools accredited, and numerous state, national, and local awards. You made that happen. You matter. Thank you. Finally, I want to thank you for letting me show the smartest something you've become this year. I've become a lot smarter as a result of these opportunities to the school board. I truly thank you. I'm also looking forward to using that knowledge to support Dr. Parker as I transition to the other side of this room as the Chief Academic Officer. We've accomplished a lot here in Newport News Public Schools, but there's a lot left to do. And I'm very confident that under Dr. Parker's leadership, we're gonna continue that journey. Speaking of Dr. Parker, he will be here tomorrow uh, for a meet and greet at Gildersleeve, so we're very excited to welcome him to Newport News Public Schools and show them, him all the amazing things that we'll, we, we have going on. So tomorrow, June 6th, from 5.30 to 7, please come out and greet Dr. Parker. Uh, we're very excited about that and looking forward to that tomorrow. Um, as Susan mentioned, it is graduation season. We kick off with the Chibble Dream on Thursday, and then everybody else, the five big major are this weekend. So check social media and the website because I will give you the wrong date, the wrong time, and I don't want you to blame it on me. Uh, so not that you need a reminder for this, but the last day of school is June 14th. Nobody needs a reminder for that one. Um, and then Spark revs up after that. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for your support. And uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, we're going to move the agenda. And to, uh, at this time, do we have any cards from our audience? I have no additional cards. And there being none, we're going to move to item number seven, uh, matters by our school board. And we'll start off with our student rep, Ms. Ramirez. Thank you. It is my last meeting. Uh, there is a lot that I want to say, but I am going to keep it as brief as I can because I know I'll start rambling. <laughs> First of all, I want to make clear that it's been a, a truly an honor to sit here besides all of my fellow board members. Um, obviously, you guys are much more experienced than I am and will continue to do this for a lot longer than I am, but just this one year has shaped me so much and seeing all of you and how you do your work has shaped me so much and changed my perspective on the entire institution that surrounds me. Um, going into that a little bit more, this is an invaluable position, as Cameron mentioned. Uh, it, I've only been here a year, but it's taught me the value of an engaged community the value of government, especially local government, something that as a student I couldn't really see before uh, in class. We're usually, you know, we talk about the federal government, sometimes the state government. I had no idea how much of a role the local government played in my everyday life. And having this position has taught me how important it is to really stay engaged with that, uh, how easy it is to stay engaged with that, um, and to be, keep, um, keep tabs on your community and see what's going on and if you want to make a change, you know, that you have the ability to do that. Um, it's changed the way I see the institutions around me. It's taught me to question these institutions as much as it's taught me to respect them. Uh, it's changed my own ideas about what I want to do and what I want to be um, in a positive way. You know, I'm interested in politics because I've been able to see the change that it can make. I've been able to see the positive impact it can have on a community. So I really just want to thank everyone for um, allowing me to serve this year. It has been a transformative experience. But anyway, uh, enough about me. Uh, as <laughs> has been mentioned, uh, graduation is very soon. 
Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, the class of 2018 because, you know, we made it, finally. <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, this year, the class of 2018 moves on. But as I'm sure you're all aware, uh, and I hope I speak for all of us, uh, we will never forget what Newport News Public School Systems has done for us. Um, it really has made all the difference for me and for my peers. Uh, and I would like to uh, give a big thank you to not just the school board, but to the school system as a whole on behalf of the class of 2018 for all that you've allowed us to do, as you saw with the wonderful presentation. Finally, good luck to all those students and to the less lucky students who have to take exams all next week. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Ramirez. Uh, next up, we'll have Mr. Brown. All right. Well, um, this is, uh, I think, the close of our, our year, and it's been a really exciting, um, uh, and I'd say a very productive and successful year that we've had as we um, pause and, and reflect. Uh, to Ms. Ramirez, it has been uh, truly a pleasure working with you, uh, and we wish you all the, the best of luck in the world in your future endeavors, and know that it is a requirement, just like Mr. Rasco came back here tonight, it's a requirement for you to come back next year and brief us on how um, your college uh, uh, and career experiences have been uh, over the last year, just like Mr. Rasco did tonight. He knows I um, put him up to it, <laughs> told him he had to speak. Uh, and, uh, but I really appreciate, Mr. Rasco, your experiences uh, to know that Newport News has prepared you as well as it has to be elite, not only uh, to get in uh, to the school of your choice, which uh, I know we talked about that was the school of your choice, but as well to be a leader in that school. Uh, and uh, uh, he did, uh, Mr. Harris is going to be upset, but he's decided to be a Marine. <laughs> Uh, and, and not, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we, we honor you, and, and we know that you are going to serve our country proud. Uh, we are, uh, you have brought hope uh, to our city and our community, and uh, we are extremely proud of you. And we thank you for um, for your commitment in not only serving on the board, but again coming back and, and be will, being willing to speak uh, to uh, to us again about your experiences. Uh, to Mr. Stagio. Uh, I'm going to uh, definitely miss your presence uh, here. Uh, Mr. Stagio is probably uh, one of the first people I met who uh, talked me into this, um, this craziness uh, of, of school board. Uh, so uh, I guess I fault you for that. Um, but uh, in terms of accomplishments, I know that uh, Mr. Stagio has been was responsible for our, our grading uh, system change while he was on the, on the board here. I, I think that's one of his uh, um, chief accomplishments. And, and that is a, a, great, um, a great accomplishment and a great testament I learned from your example on how um, to make change and how change can happen uh, within the school division and I appreciate uh, the example that you laid down and set and to uh, Mr. Ashby uh, I appreciate that you have been a cornerstone of the progress that the school division has made uh, as we talked about tonight 12 years you've been here through the whole period of time that we have been increasing our graduation rate and, and I know that it's a testament to your leadership uh, I saw um, uh, Mr. Ashby was down there with Mr. Rasco doing what he always does. He was trying to get Mr. Rasco to come and talk to his kids at the church. And he roped him into talking to his kids while he's here just for a few weeks trying to relax and be with his mom and, and enjoy his summer. Mr. Ashby already got him down there at the church talking to his kids. Uh, and so I know that you will continue to, to serve our community and, and to do those activities which are so important for building up our generation, our future generations. And thank you for that. Uh, and, and lastly, just um, uh, happy graduation to everyone. Uh, great accomplishment, a real strong class of 2018. Be looking forward to seeing you all walk across the stage. Uh, this is uh, the weekend where we get to uh, really um, reflect on this is what it's all about. Uh, for me, this is um, the, the one weekend that makes all of the, the blood, sweat, and tears worth it. Uh, and um, uh, to, uh, to Mr. Nichols, I do want to say uh, thank you. This has been a, um, a period of time that we I think I've accomplished quite a bit, and I want to thank you that uh, you uh, uh, worked with me in reaching out to community groups, uh, and that we made a lot of headway. I think this year in um, in bridging a connection to community groups that uh, I think pre previously or historically felt underserved. Uh, and so I really appreciate that, and, and thank you for that. And I know uh, the strong academic progress is going to continue. We've had a strong class, and, and I know that uh, um, there's uh, our best is yet to come. And so with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the four percent. Uh, we made it happen. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Brown. This is Simon. So it's been an exciting couple weeks. Um, we had a lovely retirement banquet to thank all of our um, teachers and employees who've dedicated so many years of service. 
Um, the board was excited to have a number of members from city council join us at the banquet, and that was really nice to get some to spend some time with them. Uh, also, we had the Denby Early Childhood Center had a pre-K expo, and some of the city council members came to that. And I was just so pleased to see our four-year-olds and five-year-olds so excited about learning, and they were using big words to describe volcanoes, magma, and sedimentary rocks. They were talking about um, plankton, and I mean, it was just really impressive to see these five-year-olds coming up with all these big words. And I also went to Community STEM Day, and uh, just a shout out to uh, CNU for hosting us and helping plan the day. Definitely, it was full of kids from Newport News Public Schools ev everywhere you turned, and so much hands-on learning going on at STEM Day. So that was very exciting. And I, I was also reminded about, um, we, we had Google came to Newport News Public Schools. And uh, there's a little story there um, we have a graduate from Warwick High School who works at, at Google, and she was in Ireland. And I know, I know about her through a friend of mine, so I was trying, this is like four years ago, I was asking her, will you please Skype in to, this, to high school students uh, to talk to them about what you do at Google? We really want you to interact with our students. And it didn't really work out. Well, she gets transferred back to the United States and into the education department, and lo and behold, I get an email saying they want to come and do some beta testing with Newport News Public Schools. So um, that connection was made, and they came, and apparently it was an amazing experience for some of our students at Crittenden and other schools, but I, I'm just really hoping that maybe we can get Google back and continue that partnership. But, also, I want to say congratulations to all of our seniors. Good <laughs> luck on your next steps, and we will be there this weekend at graduation. Thank you, Ms. Simons. I'm Mr. Ely. I just want to first thank um, our two school board members for the will serve time they've done with us. They've definitely been an inspiration with me on my two years being on the school board so far. I also would like to thank the Huntington alumni for allowing me to speak at their ceremony for scholarship recipients. They gave out well over $8,000 of scholarships this past weekend. And I'm not gonna be long because my voice is pretty much mm -hmm. gone, but I just wanna thank um, our student leader, Ramona, as she did an amazing job with keeping us attacking and leading the programs for our students. Thank you. And, and Mr. Brian Nichols, he held us down for the last six months. It was a pleasure having you. You was definitely involved with the community and the community love you. And I'm so excited about our next superintendent for, for you know, to see what direction she's gonna take us in and continue having new news on a great track. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ely. Uh, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Ramirez, uh, thank you for all your service, uh, your, your hard work and dedication uh, to the education system. I know in the future you're going to continue to do great and wonderful things, there's no doubt, okay? Thank you very much. Mr. Rasko, I'm glad you were able to come back uh, to visit us. I just want to leave, leave you with some parting knowledge. Uh, once you get commissioned, just remember, do not require any of your subordinates to do or attempt anything that you yourself will not do. And I think if you keep that as a stable uh, platform, that will guide you through your career, okay? I'll always remember that. Uh, to uh, this young gentleman to my right, uh, Mr. Stardew. I gave him a nickname when I first got here. I said, you know, this guy's pretty steady, you know, so, <laughs> but I never told you that. He's steady Stardew, that's what I call him. He's been a, he's been a, uh, a, 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 a cornerstone uh, to this board. Uh, I've learned a lot from him. <coughs> Uh, I learned to keep my pressure down uh, just by obser uh, observing Mr. Stargo. And uh, thank you for your leadership and your dedication that you put a foundation here on the school board that, that's going to last for a while. Uh, thank you for your service. You, All right, and to this young gentleman right here on my left, yeah. <laughs> yes, young, uh, it's something I noticed about him right off the bat that he has what you call a teach, coach, mentor uh, mentality, uh, which covers pretty much. Uh, the whole uh, spectrum of, of learning, especially when it comes to young young kids. But he is passionate and, and true about 
uh, what he believes in when it comes to young people. Because at the end of the day, uh, that's where it starts at. Uh, and so I sit back and I admire you and admire your passion uh, for that. Uh, uh, I've learned to redirect some of my passion uh, just by observing you, and I really appreciate that. And you've been a cornerstone <coughs> on this board. And the thing or the legacy that, you, that you've put in place and left behind uh, will still be emulated uh, for years to come. And thank you for your service. And to the man in the middle, Mr. Nichols, uh, th there's something to be said about uh, the transition of power. Uh, I think this is the only nation where some of them, where power is transferred uh, uh, peacefully. And I want to uh, uh, give you kudos for that, for working uh, within this uh, process of us selecting a superintendent, uh, uh, even though you, you know, you you were uh, a candidate for that, but you never wavered. You you continued on with uh, leading this school division, and some of the qualities that I've noticed in you, and I know will continue uh, to come in handy for us. Uh, 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 you're loyal, uh, uh, not just to the school board, but also to the teachers. Uh, to the school division and most of all the students, uh, duty, uh, uh, respect for your craft, uh, your selfless uh, service that I've seen through this uh, last couple of uh, six months, um, and, and your moral and your moral courage uh, to always, uh, you know, say what you mean, mean what you say, and and, and being fair uh, to all that you come across. And yes, the community do love you. I've, I've heard that numerous of times, uh, which is a strength that most uh, leaders, uh, most leaders don't have. Okay, uh, so we appreciate that. So we again look forward to wonderful and, and great things that uh, you're going to help Dr. Parker with and continue to move this school division forward. And Mr. Chairman, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, Mr. Stajo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so. At the end of an eight-year experience, um, I uh, reflect back on how I started, and uh, like Mr. Rasco said, you start big things often by jumping in, not really knowing, you know, where the bottom is, and that certainly was true. Um, and so I thank I thank uh, the community for putting me here, um, uh, the board for working with me and tolerating me at times. Uh, my big thanks is out to the community of Newport News Public Schools, um, all the people that make this operation work. Um, the first, so as a school board member, when you get elected, you've been convinced by the public that um, it's going to be a disaster and <laughs> your phone's going to ring off the hook. And uh, that has an effect on you. And so the first day of school came and my phone didn't ring. And so then I logged on to my uh, email account, and uh, my inbox was not filling up. And uh, there were, you know, there was a, a, there was an email or two, but we're talking about twenty-eight thousand kids, and um, you know, and many more parents. Um, and I, I really thought something was wrong at that point. And when I talked to the superintendent, she said quite adamantly that we pay a lot of attention to making sure that we work out the kinks. And that doesn't happen by accident. This, <coughs> this school division runs their operation, you know, like a well-oiled machine. And it, it, it doesn't happen by accident. Um, I, I, the, the thing that I went through in the first year was realizing that um, it, it, it wasn't a case of trying to come to the table to straighten it out. It was a case of trying to come to the table to understand it. And the next, the next thing that um, I came to realize is that it takes a great deal as a board member to fit all of what's necessary into the head of a school board member. Um, so it's, it's not something that um, is, easily, is easily processed and easily understood. Um, but what, what is going on and what I've enjoyed here is the ability to understand the depth of public education, the obligation, just how important it is. And then of course I had the, you know, I had a daughter who was going through middle school and high school at, uh, over the last eight years, and I had a sample of one, and you have to realize that um, 
Um, when she's having a bad day, it's not necessarily the teacher, it's not necessarily the, the students. Um, um, what I came to understand about the school division is that they are there for parents. And uh, it, it's a fantastic thing that this school division has the depth that it does. Um, it's quite an accomplishment. I feel blessed to have been part of it. I've told a lot of people, whenever I get a chance, this is a great job to do, don't be afraid of it. Um, and I've thoroughly enjoyed what it's exposed me to. Um, I think I've gotten more than, than I gave. Um, and that's because of all of you and what you've shared and the ability to do this, this big broad work, uh, but also to see it on the ground level of what it means when you know, kids get stronger and they accomplish things that um, uh, you dream for them, but uh, you can't quite see when they're teenagers. Um, so it's been a great experience. Um, and I, I leave that experience uh, uh, certainly with uh, mixed feelings. Uh, and I'd love to continue working um, uh, with you. But um, my time has come to an end. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to everybody. Thank you, Mr. Stodger. Um, Vice Chair, Mr. Ashby. Well, good evening. Um, I usually do not write notes because I, I just simply love speaking from the heart, but today I just wanted to jot a couple of notes. I know the time is, is getting late. First of all, to our two students, reps that are present here um, this evening, you have represented students extremely and exceptionally well. Um, we thank you for your commitment, your hard work, sharing with us and expressing us what children of Newport News Public Schools need and what they desire. Um, you've done phenomenal. Um, secondly, I, I had the experience of going to Denby Early Childhood Center and Marshall Learning Center and to STEM Day. Um, took my young achievers to STEM Day Saturday and once they got into STEM Day, they did not want to leave. There was just simply so much <coughs> Um, for them to be involved in and so much for them to look forward to. Um, it is a phenomenal situation. When I think about STEM Day and some other things, I, I, I might sound repetitive or redundant, but Newport News is synonymous with innovation. It's just that simple. The creativity, the forward thinking that has happened um, over the 12 years in which I have been here has just simply um, been phenomenal. I was asked to be a school board member by Miss Effie Ash. No, I was told to be a school board <laughs> member um, by Miss Effie Ash. And um, she came to me and she got after me and I went ahead and ran and was able to, to, um, to represent um, the <coughs> South District and all the children of Newport News Public Schools um, for 12 years. And it's something which I enjoy. I thank the entire Newport News Public Schools um, community, the Newport News family I call, because everybody from um, the night custodian at the smallest school in Newport News Public Schools, all the way up to the superintendent, acting superintendent and previous superintendent, Dr. Kilgore, I got to work with, really played an integral and major part in the success of children. It's like putting a puzzle together, and all the pieces have to go together. If the pieces are not in there, then the puzzle is not complete. So every single person um, and all about 5,000 employees played a huge, huge part in reference to that. I got to come in and, and was part of the board that hired Dr. Ashby Kilgore, um, which was a phenomenal experience. And over <coughs> these 11 to 12 years, um, just some tremendous things have happened. I, I basically brag and boast about the success of Newport News Public Schools, whether I'm here in the city or somewhere um, in this country, but I always am bragging and boasting about. We have a remarkable and outstanding story to tell, and it's attributed to all the hard work that every single employee does, which, which was led by Dr. Kilgore and by Mr. Nichols as the acting superintendent. I look at Mr. Brian Nichols with so much respect, so much admiration, so much awe, because there was so much going on but he never, ever took his foot off the gas pedal that represented children. So my pastor calls him Magic Harris. He's a true person that represents positive attitude, accountability, precision, all those elements, all those dynamics describe him because he's about children. And this is what this is really, really about. So much admiration to you um, for that. Again, the growth of the school system I consistently and constantly talk about because it has been phenomenal. I cannot leave my, uh, my, my list and comments without um, recognizing 
And I'm saying congratulations to Dr. Terry Best, who will be representing the, um, the South District. Um, I thank her for running a race. She has won the race. I will support her and continue to support the children of um, not only the South District, but of Newport News um, entirely. Tomorrow is June 6th, um, 2018, of course. And in 1968, um, Robert Fitzgerald Kennedy was assassinated. And when Ted Kennedy was doing his eulogy, he said something really, very, very significant that I think is very pertinent to um, Newport News Public Schools. He said, some people see things and ask why. I dream things that never were and say, why not? And if you really stop and think about it, the innovation, the progress that has happened in the school system, that's what has been displayed and demonstrated consistently and constantly um, in a situation and setting. Um, Dr. John Maxwell has written a book called The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And one of his laws of leadership is the law of the lid. And what he talks about in that book and talk about that concept is, you know, if you have an idea, if you have a vision, and if you don't take the lid off of it, it stays inside of there. Well, what the Newport News Public Schools family, Dr. Kilgore, Mr. Nichols, the senior staff, consistently took the lid off, and this is why the progress has happened in this situation and setting. So all that, I will definitely welcome and support um, Dr. George Parker um, for a couple minutes tomorrow night. I have to speak at Nelson's fifth grade promotion um, ceremony tomorrow, so I am looking forward to, to that. And I think my last comment, um, because I have enjoyed working with this board, um, of course, the superintendent, senior staff. Um, but there's an Argus poster that I have that, that hangs in my team leadership room and my young achievers room. And it sums up Newport News Public Schools and all the work that has been done. And what the Argus poster says is, don't tell me the sky's the limit when there are footprints on the moon. Don't tell me the sky's the limit when there are footprints on the moon. Anything that this school system puts its mind to, it achieves, it accomplishes, it goes above and beyond, and that's why we have the numbers. And everything is not quantitative. Many things are qualitative, but it's been displayed and demonstrated by the growth in our children and what we're going to witness this weekend in reference to graduation. Um, so I do thank this board, thank the family, the Newport News family, for allowing me to serve all this time. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Um, again, uh, uh, time is becoming the night. Uh, again, there was a lot of great things happening in Newport News. We will see them again this on display on Thursday, and then again three times on Saturday and twice on Sunday. Um, I, I'm going to start off by thanking uh, Ms. Ramirez for, again, an outstanding job done. Uh, our students have chosen, since I've been on the board, four outstanding students. I mean, all four have been just wonderful and um, each have uh, pursued their careers and have come back and told us about how they are doing and again we will expect the same from you uh, I know you um, I'm going to see you probably at the White House one day and you have that type of drive again thank you um, Cameron for coming back again and sharing that with us as well and uh, I know you're on your way to a fabulous uh, career to one morning, one Saturday morning, about 8.15, my phone rings. And um, I tell you, we happened to be on, but I was getting up and going to our Kappa League. My, my fraternity has a Kappa League football team. And I was getting up, go down there and work the concession stands. And um, on my Cox TV came up Jeff Stodd. <coughs> <laughs> and uh, and um, him and I was talking, he said, hey, your name keeps coming up. Your name, your name came up and to be a possible school board member. And so I was kind of talking in codes and I have the phone and my wife says, what does Jeff want? You at four through eight o'clock in the morning. I says, well, he was thinking about, uh, my name came up to be on the school board. I'd be on the board. She says, oh, not the city council. But I said, no school board. So I leave uh, my experience, uh, Jeff has been my mentor. Uh, Jeff has always been my mentor, Jeff. Um, at one time, we were, uh, last year or so, we were the dynamic duel. Uh, when we went in and did things, uh, um, and took this board and we went and negotiated and discussed stuff with the city council. Uh, you were there, I was there by your side. Uh, you were, and vice versa, you were by my side. So um, 
I kind of hold you up to high esteem of to giving me this opportunity to be the chair. And uh, if your leadership that I followed, uh, I, I knew I was uh, going to do okay. And then uh, the second phone call I, I get, I think my wife says, uh, Carlton Ashby wants you to call her. And so I call Carlton Ashby and I asked him and I and Mr. Hicks went out for a lunch down at Pearlie's, mm -hmm. <laughs> down in East End, down at Pearlie's, and we had lunch together, and they kind of quizzed me about why um, I thought I would be a good school board candidate. And But as I was talking, and after our long lunch, um, both of them said, says, Gary, what I heard from you is you love kids. You love children, and that's all, that's all you ever hear about Carlton. Mr. Ashby is, he loves kids. You want to do this? Don't go to Carlton about numbers. If it ain't about the kids, it's a no. <laughs> I can tell you, if you wanted to build this, you want to do this type of raise, if it wasn't about the children, Carlton was going to vote, it was not even going to vote on it. So Carlton, I know your passion is uh, undeniable when it comes to um, our kids. I know whatever you do, it's going to be the best interest of our kids here today. And then continue to do what you're going to do. And Mr. Nichols, you and I have had some private conversations in the last week or so. I'm going to tell you what you've done and how you've led our school the last six months have been nothing but outstanding. And as I heard from before, there was no waiver from you, even though this tough decision of getting a new superintendent, uh, you never frowned. When I spoke to you, you, you answered every phone call, you answered every email. I'm going to tell you, you did what an outstanding, what a stand-up person that you are as a man Thank and you. as a leader. Um, I hold that close to you. And so, what, so what's crazy about it and what's joyous about it is that we're going to get Dr. Parker and what we're going to have is a dynamic duo. You're still going to be here. Helping us to lead this because we're going to lead, we're going to lean on you. Dr. Parker's going to lean on you as well to uh, get us to the next step. I know you, uh, you and I have talked. I admire you, Brian. Uh, I love how you, what you've done. Uh, like you said again, you have taken this school system out into the public, and even uh, to a different level. You, you stepped it up to a different level. Uh, folks came into this school board and talked about how well you've done, how much they like you. And that all that can do is continue to propel us forward. So that being said, uh, we're gonna miss Jeff. We're gonna miss Carlton uh, just up here, but I'm not gonna miss, you know, I know you'll call us. I know one day you'll be sitting up there and coming into that mic and, and telling us, <laughs> you know, and giving you us an opinion. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That means that you're still engaged and, and that's what we want from um, past school board members, present school board members, and future school board members. We want them to be engaged. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for your service. Uh, that being said, we're going to move the agenda again. <laughs> and at this time, I believe it's a closed meeting. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd like to submit the motion um, to convene a closed meeting in accordance with the Code of Virginia Section 2.23711A, subsections 3 and 7 for the purpose of, one, the discussion or consideration of the acquisition or disposition of real property where discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiation strategy of the public body, and two, consultation consultation with legal counsel and briefings by staff members or consultants where such consultation or briefing in an open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigation posture of the public body. Uh, you hear the motion, is there a second? Second. You heard the motion, you heard the second, time for the question. There being none, Ms. Sintem, please call the roll. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Mr. Starchill? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Against. Mr. Harris? Four. Motion carries, six in favor, one against. Okay, I guess we'll recess for uh, our closed session.